भद्रम करने भी शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्ये माक्षवीर यजत्रा स्थिर रंग तुष्टवांश स्तनु भी व्यशेम देव हित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न कूषा विश्ववेद स्वस्ति न स्ताक्ष वरिष्ठ नेमी स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओम शांति 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 वे आर स्टडिंग हेयर मुंडक उपनिषद विथ शंकराचार्य कॉमेंट्री एंड वे आर स्टडीड अप टू फर्स्ट थ्री मंत्र ऑफ द फर्स्ट सेक्शन ऑफ फर्स्ट मुंडक एंड इन दैट वे हैव कम टू नो द पोजिशन ऑफ द साधक वेन वी नो द पोजिशन ऑफ द साधक then only we can understand what the guru taught him that is the process and that is why this third mantra specially is important and in that third mantra shavnako hoye mahashalo angirasam vidivad upasannam prapracha kasminno bhagavo vigyate sarvam vidam vigyatam bhavati iti so we have seen first thing that शुनक से अपत्यम शौनक ही वॉज ए महाशाल ही वॉज ए ग्रेट हाउस होल्डर विच मीन्स ही वॉज ए सक्सेसफुल हाउस होल्डर एंड विच ऑल्सो मीन्स दैट ही वॉज ए राइचस हाउस होल्डर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट स्ट्रगल ऑफ राइचसनेस विथ दिस कंडीशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड देर वॉज इवोल्यूशन इन हिज माइंड दैट इज ए महाशाल एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इवोल्यूशन from this question we understand he had a feeling that there is one common reality one common reality is there in the world though in the world major two things we see one is the distinction between i and the world and second is the manifoldness in the world so in spite of that there is a common reality between all of them that is what he has felt but he does not know what is the nature of that reality and he wants to see it realize it possess it make it one's own that is the mental condition and he knows that there are people there are sages there are rishis who know everything about it and they can teach me all this is in his mind so what we read theoretically vivek vairagya samadam uprati moksha all that we see in him as a model that he knows that i do not see it but there are people who see it and they can show me the way this much is in his mind so feeling of common reality start successful householder righteous householder evolved householder and due to this evolution they he has a feeling that there is a common reality he does not know what is the nature of that reality and he wants to make it his own and he knows that though i do not see there are sages who see and india or the whole world is never bereft of one of them always someone is available in the whole world who has seen the reality that is a fact and because of that because of a certain spiritual law especially working in india the disciple knows that his guru is at such and such a place so that is another fact so he went to angiras and angiras was a man of tradition so in the first two mantras we saw brahma the originator of this world and the protector of this world is the first source of knowledge and he gave it he freely gave it is this knowledge is not for hiding he gave it but not to all this knowledge has not to be given to all because in the world there are many types of people some people are 
full of desires and they go on working. They are good and bad, they don't consider. But there are other people who know that if I have good intentions, I will get good results and they come to the scriptures, Karmakanda scriptures. There are still others who, because of this feeling, they hanker after the reality instead of the world. So, he knows that there are people and that there are sages who have realized and that is how the, it is to be given to these type of people. So, Brahma gave it to his eldest son, Atharva, and Atharva gave it to Angi, Angi gave it to Satyavah Bharadvaj, and Satyavah Bharadvaj gave it to Angira. And in those days, in Shavanaka's days, it was well known that Angira has the right knowledge. So, with this background, Shavanaka went to Angiras, and he asked him the question from his heart. This question is neither a blank question nor a question from his brain. It is a question from his heart. And how questions come? There are so many levels of consciousness. Now, something of the higher consciousness, we get a peep into it. But it is not it is not harmonious with the other experience which you have. That is how the question comes. And what the teacher does, he pulls our mind to that higher plane from where the truth is coming. And there everything is harmonious. That is how he gets the answer. So he went to Angiras and asked him. And we saw the Shankar's commentary on that. So now we turn our attention to the Reply he got in the fourth mantra. Tasmai saha uacha dve vidde vedita veiti hasma yad brahma vidho vadanti paracha eva aparacha. He told him, what he told him, you want to know the common reality. Now you must first know there are two types of knowledges. That is the most important thing of this Mundakupa Michal. There are two types of knowledges. And here let me tell you, there are thousands of misunderstandings about these two types of knowledges. Because where from we get this word? Mundakupa Michal. So you have to see the Mundakupanisha definition of what these two types are. And we generally say, science is a paravidya. And religion is paravidya. Here, mind you, science is not mentioned at all. Science deals with, we have seen several times, science deals with the experience of ordinary man of five senses. And by reasoning built upon that, that is not counted as Veda or Veda Vidya or Vidya at all. For that you go to science. If you want to know what works in a volcano, you go to science. If you want to know how to go to space, you go to science. Vedas give you only the subtler knowledge. And we have seen in detail what is the subtler knowledge. So first of all, all of you please remove from your mind the idea that lower knowledge is science. Science is not counted as Veda Vidya at all. And here we are talking of Veda Vidya. So what is lower and what is higher? First of all, you should understand that this is from the Mundaka Upanishad. Now, I know an object. Subject knowing an object, this is lower knowledge. A subject knowing the object and dealing with it is called the lower knowledge. Now you want to know the common reality. You have felt the common reality, but, and you want to know it. So first of all, you know that to know the common reality, you will have to shift your idea of knowledge. Because the common reality is your reality also. 
and your reality how can you objectify it you can never objectify your own reality and so the knowing is of a very different type the knowing is as per the nature of the reality knowing is not a subject knowing the object knowing the reality common reality universal reality is of the nature of what that reality is nature is let us try to understand slowly and gradually but this is the basic difference anything which you know as a subject and object now that object if you take as gross object science if you take that gross object as subtle object chetan conscious object subtle elements karma karma par go to the karma kanda of the vedas and that is dealt with in brief here but that is not what shonaka wants shonaka wants to know the common reality so to know the common reality you have to rise above the very idea of subject knowing the object unless you rise above the idea of subject knowing the object unless you have something which you are identical with the world is identical with that common reality only in that case it will become the common reality common reality of the subject and the object common reality of the multifarious objects common reality of the subject and of the object simultaneously and common reality of the multifarious objects that reality how to know will be a very different question so tasmai sah uvacha dve vidya vedita veiti there are two types of knowledge to be known in this world what are those types first he ha iti hasma yad brahma vidho vadanti who tells us there are two types of knowledge not the scientist not the karma kandis who tells us there are two types of knowledge who knows brahman who knows the common reality one who has realized the common reality he knows that there are two types of knowledges so that yet brahma vidho vadanti there are those people who have realized the common universal reality and they see because those who are on the lower level they will never see the higher level those who are on the higher level can see all the levels and so it is only the people who have realized brahman who know that there are two types of knowledge paracha the supreme knowledge or the real knowledge eva and aparacha the lower knowledge lower knowledge ve vidde two types of knowledge so he will tell us what is the higher knowledge and what is the lower knowledge so first we have to assimilate and understand what is this type of reply he has asked what is that which is common reality and he has not replied to that at all because the answer is not to the question these days we have objective test yes or no one two three four choice the reply in spiritual life can never never be like that spiritual life requires a change in our physical mental and conscious attitude of consciousness spiritual life requires we change the very nature of our consciousness and therefore the answer cannot be what is their common reality x y z no impossible x y z all will become objects so x y z will become all objects none of them so the answer requires a shift in the mental get up 
the answer requires a shift in the very process of knowledge. The answer requires our idea of knowledge should change. And so he says that there is a supreme knowledge and there is a lower knowledge also. See what Shankaracharya is telling. Tasmai shaunakaya angira aha kila vacha. To that shaunak, angira said, Kimiti uchate, what did he say? Dve vidde, vedita ve iti. Evam hasma kila yad brahma vido vedartha vidna a. Brahma means Vedas also. Brahma Vido means those who understand the inner meaning of Vedas, inner meaning of scriptures, those who understand Paramartha Darshina, those who have seen the ultimate reality, those who know the inner meaning of the scriptures, Vedas, and those who know the ultimate reality, Paramartha Darshino. Those Darshino is what is in Sanskrit called Shil Pratyek. That means that they are habituated to see the ultimate reality. They are habituated to always deal with the higher knowledge. They are habituated to always to see the ultimate reality. Those people are telling there are two types of knowledge. What are those two types? Paracha, Paramatma Vidya. Supreme knowledge is knowledge about our own reality. Let me explain here the word Paramatma. It is not that there is a Jivatma and there is a Paramatma. No. But we take usually our body to be our reality. If we are little evolved, we take our Indriyas as our reality. If we are still more evolved, we take mind as our reality. We take I consciousness as my reality, but they are not really real. Though they appear real as per my level of consciousness, then what is ultimately real? That is called Paramatma. The word Paramatma is used to distinguish our feeling of Atma about the lower things. Body also felt as Atma, mind felt as Atma, I consciousness felt as Atma, but none of them are really my Atma. So, real Atma is called Paramatma. Paramatma Darshino. And they have become habituated. Paramartha is that right? Paramatma Vidya. So knowledge about one's own ultimately real. Aparacha Dharma Dharma Sadhana Tat Pala Vishaya. This one has to understand a little. I told you Apara is where the subject sees the object. Now what does it do? If the subject sees the object, automatically a desire arises to possess that object. And when the desire of arises, he has to go in the proper way. If he goes in the improper way, he will not get the desired object, he will have a fall. So, he must know what is the righteous way of getting a desired object. That is called dharma. Dharma is punya. Dharma is the righteous conduct. Dharma is the righteous way of getting desired objects. And the desired objects vary. <coughs> <coughs> desired objects may be objects of this world. Desired objects may be objects of heaven. Desired objects may be objects of still higher lotus. So, to earn them, one requires righteous conduct. So, that is how Shankara jumps upon telling that Apara Vidya is about the righteous conduct. And other months, if your conduct is wrong, you will get, you will not get desired objects. 
you will have bad results you will have to suffer so you should not do that is also a part of the lower knowledge the lower knowledge where the subject desires an object has two parts what is right conduct so that you get your desired object what is the wrong way by which you go away from your desired object dharma dharma sadhana you will have to do that dharma dharma is not only to be known but practiced and when you practice dharma dharma then the phala you get tat phala vishaya so you have desired object you do right thing you do not do bad thing you have to actually do the right thing you have to actually avoid the bad thing then you will get that as your result this is dharma dharma sadhana tat phala vishaya so vishaya means above that there is the lower knowledge lower knowledge is dharma adharma sadhana tat phala vishaya because dharma lower knowledge always contains subject knowing the object resulting in desire and the desire has to be fulfilled in the righteous way there are methods of fulfilling the desire and that is known only to the vedas because in the gross world we do not see it. we imagine this is right and that is wrong that is very wrong according to our idea we decide this is moral and this is immoral but that will not hold water you must go to the rishis those who know everything those who know the subtler laws of the world and they have to tell you that this is the process for getting this result this is the process for getting this result what result you want you have to do accordingly and these are bad actions they will take you away from any desired result so this means of getting good and bad results and which process gives you which result tat phala vishaya this is the lower knowledge now those who have an intellectual approach so called rational approach a doubt comes in their mind that he has not replied the question nanu kasmin vidite sarva vid bhavati iti shaunake na prashnam tasmin वक्तव्ये अपृष्ट आह अंगिरा द्विविधे इत्यादि अंगिरा शुड रिप्लाय एज पर युअर माइंड दैट शौनक एज अ नोइंग व्हिच एवरीथिंग बिकम्स नो सो यू शुड टेल हिम दैट नेम ऑफ दिस सब्सटेंस एंड ही हैज नेवर आस्क्ड यू हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ नॉलेज इज देयर सो इज द आंसर करस्पोंडिंग टू द क्वेश्चन naisha dosha shankar says that is not at the fault at all krama pekshatva pratyavachanasya the answer replies in particular order krama pekshatva what is the krama first know what is knowledge first know what is lower knowledge first know what is real knowledge and then only you can hope to know the common reality that is the krama so answer is giving step by step and this is the first of the steps only so not that he is answering irrelevantly but he is replying he is giving the first step and then he will tell the uh, how to get that knowledge so krama pekshatva prativachanasya अपरा ही विद्या अविद्या सा निरा कर्तव्या अपरा विद्या सब्जेक्ट डीलिंग विद ऑब्जेक्ट इज अविद्या इट इज फॉल्स नॉलेज बिकॉज इन दर्ल्ड देर इज नो सब्जेक्ट सेपरेट दैन द ऑब्जेक्ट वे आर स्टडी चतुसूत्री सो वी नो इट वेरी क्लियर दैट इन दर्ल्ड सब्जेक्ट नोइंग द ऑब्जेक्ट depends upon false knowledge so apara vidya hi avidya not that it is no knowledge no because it does describe that knowledge afterwards 
understand this subtlety. Shonak will understand. You have to understand as per Shonak's mind. He does not say that upper avidya is no knowledge. No. Avidya never means no knowledge. Avidya does not mean absence of knowledge. Avidya means false knowledge, wrong knowledge. So, upper avidya may appear as vidya. How to get punya, how to get particular objects may appear as knowledge. But that is knowledge about the unreal things. That knowledge is subject knowing the object is self is false. So, upper avidya is vidya. Sa nira karta vya. That mold of life and consciousness must go away. That approach of subject knowing the object, by this you are getting false knowledge and you want to get real knowledge. So, this false knowledge method has to be given up. Nirakrutte purva paksham paschat siddhanto vakta bhavati iti nyayat. So, what is that krama pekshatva? First of all, the wrong ideas have to be removed. Purva paksham, that is called purva paksha, as it comes to our mind. Purva paksha does not mean there are two debaters. Purva paksha means as it comes to our mind, and that is wrong. So, that has to be removed. Paschat, after that, siddhanto vaktavya, the right knowledge has to be given. The conclusion has to be given. The conclusive knowledge has to be given after removing the wrong knowledge. That is the nyaya, I mean, that is the method. That is the proper method. That is the krama which is expected. And that is how Angirasa knows it well. And so Angirasa is not talking irrelevantly. He is giving you the first step. And then Tatra, Apara. He told there is a para and apara. But while describing, he describes apara first. This is important. He told the knowledge you want is para. You want to know the common reality. For that, you will have to go to the supreme knowledge, the method of supreme knowledge. And there are other types of knowledges as it is in your life today. Subject knowing the object, that has to be removed. So what is that has to be described first. Subject knowing the object has to be described first and told that that will not do. So in the Krama, he first tells what is apara vidya, tatra apara. Rigvedo, not science. The very highest karma candy religion the highest ritualistic religion, the highest devata stuti, where multifarious devatas are there and I am separate. That is Rugvedo. Samavedo. We have discussed this. The poetical portion of the Vedic literature was given, made as Rugvedo. And that which is can be sung is Samveda. Rugveda Yajurveda. That means the prose portion is Yajurveda. Veda. Settler knowledge. Chaitanya knowledge, Karma Kanda knowledge, Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda is the singing portion from the Rigveda. Atharva Veda was the last discovered. So this Upanishad itself is from Atharva Veda. So Atharva Veda, Shiksha, Kalpo, Vakaranam, Niruktam, Chando, Jyoti Shamiti. The six are called Vedangas. That means to understand the ritualistic portion of the Vedas and to get the real benefit from that, these are sciences to be studied. Not in themselves. But they are studied, for example, Shiksha. What is Shiksha? Appear Shiksha is education. No. Shiksha is the Vidya proper 
pronunciation of the Vedas, then only the meaning comes up. So you must know the proper way of reciting Vedas, the proper way of pronouncing Vedas. This is a part of the Vedic Vidya. Kalpo. In a karma kanda, you have to know first step what, then what, then what. This steps of particular karma is called kalpo. Vyakaranam. Vyakaranam is the derivation of words. Pronunciation is one thing. Vyakaranam means the, how the word is derived. That you know. Then only you will understand the Vedas. So Vyakaranam. Niruktam is directly getting the meaning of the words of Vedas. How to find out the meaning? That is Vyakaranam. Grammar. And how? Which, which word in Vedas means what? That is called Nirukta. Like big dictionaries. Vedic dictionaries. Chando. Prosodi. That means the Vedas are composed in different meters. And unless you know the meters, the science of meter, you will not be able to read the Vedas properly. You must know because the Vedas are chanted all together. There is no comma, full stop, inverted commas. It was not in those days. So, Chanda means prosody, the science of meters. If you know this is the meter, then you will stop at 16 letters. Then you will stop at next part of 16 letters. So, Chanda is the knowledge of prosody which is essential to understand the meaning of the Vedas. Jyotisham. Now the Jyotisha verb is of two different combinations. Graha Jyotisha and Phala Jyotisha. Astronomy and astrology. And astrology is not mentioned here. Astronomy is mentioned. That means the position of the stars. Calculate the position of the stars. Because this Havana, we had seen him before, Desha Kala Nimitta. This particular ritual has to be done when the stars have this particular conjunction. Then only they succeed. Success of the work does not depend upon the mere outside activity. It depends upon the proper time and place where that work is done. If work is done uh, in Kashi or near the Ganges, will be thousand times more successful than uh, done in the inner chamber of our house. So time, place, these are essential elements of the good work. And to know that, we must know. We must study astronomy. You should know that the moderns say that sun does not revolve around the earth. Earth revolves around the sun. And they say, world is wrong. But mind you, whether you take this revolves around that or that revolves around this, we are concerned with the relative motion. And so, all the calculations, how the things are verified at the time of Grahan, at the time of this uh, Titi, at the time of this Nakshatra, they are observable. So, all the predictions done according to old methods are as much correct as done according to the present method. Because they think is a relative. How the earth and sun are moving relative to each other will decide things. And so, we cannot joke on the old methods. They are as valid methods of calculation. And then what will be the result and all that is not our question, Palajyotish. But a work done at the proper time yields correct result. So, to understand that proper time, we must know the science of astronomy. So these are all parts of the ritualistic karma. 
these are all parts of how to fulfill the desire where the subject knows the object and feels a desire. All this becomes a part of that. Four Vedas and the six Vedangas. So the whole gamut of religion. Science is only secondarily attached to Vedas. And Vedas is ritualistic portion. So this is not physical science as we know it. But this is grammar and everything to understand the Vedas, to do the actions correctly at the proper time. So all this together is called Aparavidya, the lower knowledge, which is the wrong knowledge, which will have to be given up. Tatra ka paraiti, ka aparaiti uchate, Rukvedo, Ejur Veda, Samvedo, Athro Veda, Iti Ete, Chatwar Veda, Shiksha Kalpo Vagranam Nirukam Chando, Jyotishmiti Angani, Shat, Esha Aparavitya. So the four Vedas and the six Vedangas are Aparavitya, or not. Atha Idanim, Yam Paravitya Uchate. After that, oh, that is there. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Uh, we read the first part of the mantra. Let me repeat it. Tatra apara rugvedo yajurveda samvedo atharveda shiksha kalpo vyakaranam niruktam chando jyoti shamiti para yaya tad aksharam adhigamvete. You cannot define paravidya like that. The whole what we call religious, the whole Punya Karma is dealt with in Aparavidya. It depends, it, it, the support is this false world, support is this false ego, and so it is Avidya. What is Para then? Para can only be described as knowing the nature of reality. There is no other way to describe it. It is not particular books which will give you. What all is required to get that common knowledge of the common reality is Paravidya. Atha para, Atha means a different type totally. Paravidya means supreme knowledge or the real knowledge. Yaya is that by which tat akhiram adhigamate. That. That akhiram that unchanging reality. That reality has to be described. But in one word, we can call it the unchanging reality. Subject changes, object changes, subject-object relation changes, but the common reality does not change. And by how that common reality will be realized, that is Paravitya. The supreme knowledge is that by which that common reality which you are asking, which is an unchanging reality, that, that means real. Unchanging, that means real, that means today which is remote, that means today you do not know it. Aksharam means unchanging reality, the common reality which you are asking, Adhigamate, is fully known or realized. That is Paravitya by which the Akshara is really fully known, realized, achieved what you are like to call. That is Paravitya. So, Shadesha Paravitya, Athaidanim, Yam Paravitya Uchate. Now, only he will tell about the Paravidya. Yayata Vakshamana Visheshana Vakramadi Gamete Prapete. About that Akshara, he has to tell many things. And that such Akshara is Adhigamete means Prapete. Really known means obtained. Because it is the common reality. Once you know this is my reality, you obtained it. So, what is knowing is achieving. Where achieving is nothing but knowing. That is Akshara. 
Vakshamana Visheshanam, its characteristics is, are yet to be told. Adigamete prapete, Adipurvase game prayasha prapti arthatva. Because gum is the root verb, but when adi prefix is added to it, mostly in general, it means obtain. Nacha parapraptir avogamarcha se bedo asti. Knowledge and getting are not different at all about the common reality. Avidyaya apaya evahi parapraptir na arthantar. Remove the avidya, remove the false knowledge. Automatically, the real knowledge dawns. So, that is the paraprapti. The way to achieve the reality is by removal of your wrong knowledge. Na arthantar, it does, it does not have any other meaning. Real or supreme knowledge does not have any other meaning. Our, ha our habit is the subject knowing the object. When this is removed, automatically, because that is our real nature. Because it is our real nature, when the obstructions are removed, it will shine by itself. It does not have any other meaning. There the question comes. Nanu rugvedadi bhayatari sa katham para vidya moksha sadhana. If it is outside the weather, then how it is moksha sadhan, how it is the paravidya? Ya veda bhaya smutoyo, yasya kasya kudrishtaya, sarvasta nishpala pretya, tamo nishtai ta smrita. Manu smruti tells us that whatever is outside the weather, smruti, smruti is outside the weather. Smruti means what the scholars have thought. What the scholars have thought, apart from the Vedas, Yascha Kascha Kudrishtaya, they are very wrong views. Sarvastha Nishpala, and they are, they will not lead to any good results. Pretya, that means after death, you will not get any good results. Tamo Nishtai, they are full of darkness. Tasmruta, that is how we know that they are. Darkness. It is Maranti. That is what Manusmurti has taught. Kudrishti Tvat, Nishvala Tvat, Anadeya Sya. So because they are wrong knowledge, because they will not give any good result, so they should not be taken up at all. Paravidya is going outside the weather, so it is a bad knowledge, it is a fruitless knowledge, so it should not, it is not something to be taken up. Upanishadam cha rigvedadi vayatvam said, and all the Upanishads or the Vedantas are contained in the Vedas themselves. Though by Vedas prominently Karmakanda was mentioned, but Vedas were mentioned, and all the Upanishads are also part of the Vedas. So do you want to say Upanishads are outside the Vedas? And anything outside the Vedas is useless. Rigveda di tvetu prithak karanam anartha kamata parai. If they are parts of Rigveda and other Vedas, then how do you say that these are only Avidya? So again, a mental non-understanding confusion arises in the mind of the sadhu. Shankaracharya will explain that. No, that is not the thing. Vedya Vishaya Vigyana Se Vyakshitatva. Vedya Vishaya Vigyana. Vigyana means experiential knowledge. Vedya Vishaya, the reality to be known. So, reality to be known is the common reality. And Books are not knowledge. To get that reality, to realize that reality, is the thing mentioned here. Upanishad Vedya Akshara Vishemi Vigyanamiya Paravidya Iti Pradhanena Vyakshitam. Now Upanishad Shabdarashi. 
through Upanishads, what is to be known? Akshara, that unchanging reality. Through Upanishads, you have to know the unchanging reality. That science, that experiential knowledge is meant here. No, Upanishads Shabda Rashi, not the collection of words which you call Upanishad. Upanishad in the book, in the Vedas, will appear to be a collection of words. That is not Upanishad. Upanishad is that knowledge which will give us the knowledge of the indicated reality. Veda Shabdena to Sarvatra Shabda Rashi Vyokchita. So generally when we say Vedas, we mean the words of the Vedas. Shabda Rashi Adhigami Api Yatnantara Antarena Guru Guru Abhigamanadi Lakshanam Vairagyamcha Na Aksharadhigama Sambhavati Iti Ruthak Karanam Brahma Vidyaya Para Vidyaiti Katanam Chaiti so you know the Vedas, you know by heart, you know the meaning, but some more effort will be necessary. First is that you will have to go to a guru. Hapara Vidya is subject knowing the object, you can read the book and practice it. But for knowing the reality, the mind has to undergo change. Your whole personality has to undergo change. And to learn that, you must go to a guru. So that is the part of Paravitya. And there has to be a burning dispassion about everything which we obtain as a fruit of some karma. What we obtain as fruit of some karma is temporary. I do not want that. You should have that dispassion and going to the guru. They are the parts, the, the very life of Paravidya. Because Paravidya is realization of the supreme reality. And if you want to realize the supreme reality, you must go to the Guru. You must have Vairagya. Then, and that is in addition to your knowledge of the Vedas. Vedas. Yatnantaram antrena na sambhavati iti. Without these additional efforts, you will not get real knowledge. So it is necessary to separate it from Aparavidya. Though it is a part of the Vedas, but we have to separate it because Vedas generally mean the words, but this is something different. What is the meaning? of the Vedanta sentences. The meaning of the Vedanta sentences is to be seen in Guru's life. It is not in dictionaries. That is what Shankar means here. It is not in dictionaries. It is in the experience, consciousness of the sages. So you must go to a Guru to see that. And your going to the Guru will have meaning only you have dispassion about it. Otherwise, you will bring down everything again. You will bring down the knowledge of the absolute reality to the level of this upper avidya if you do not have the proper vairagya. And so, these two additional factors, other than knowing what the Vedas contain, you must go to the Guru, you must have the vairagya, and so, the Paravidya is separated from the Aparavidya. Now, he had said that the nature of the reality will be described afterwards. So that has to be described now. The nature of the reality determines how to know that reality. Epistemology depends upon metaphysics. How to know the reality depends upon what is the nature of that reality. And so, now, in brief, the nature of that reality has to be described in the six mantra. It was, it is Akshara only was told. Yat tad adresham agrayam agotram avarnam achakshushrotram tad apanipadam 
nityam vibhum sarvagatam susukshmam tad avyayam yad bhuta yonim paripashyanti dhira. So you may say this mantra has three parts. The transcendent reality, the immanent nature of the same reality, and as a part of that immanence, that it is Srishti Siti Pralaya Karta, its relation with the present world. This is how that Akshara has been described. Akshara is beyond description. So it is beyond description as to be told, that is the description. And nearer us, that appears as the whole world. And from that, the whole world is created. So, Nirguna and Sagun Brahma together in the same mantra. Nature of reality, if we say Nirguna, that answer is wrong. Nature of reality is Nirguna Saguna Brahma. If you say only Sagun, it is not reality at all. If you say only Nirguna, you are telling only one side of the reality. So here, it is very clear, in the same mantra, which describes the Nirgun Brahma, which describes the Brahman beyond all, also describes the Brahman within all. It describes Brahman immanent, and it describes Brahman as the creator, preserver, and share of this world. So, Adresham. Yet, that Adresham. Adresham is Adresham. The Vedic language is Adresham. In common Sanskrit, it will become Adresham. Mane, not an object seen to be seen by eyes. Meaning that it is not an object to be seen by the eyes. Whether the eyes see gross or circular does not matter, but it is not an object to be seen by eyes. Indication only can be given. Na? Agrayam, Karmendriyas. By hand, we catch something. So it is not something to be caught by the hand. That means it is not available to all the five senses of karma, not available to all the five senses of knowledge, not to have it, because that will become an object. Not common, not to be caught by the five senses of action, because that again becomes an object. Agotram, that means it is born from cow, it is born from this. So the source can never be told. It is not born at all. It, it has no gotra, it has no lineage. So again, it is taking us beyond the object field. Avarnam. Avarnam means you cannot describe it. Because if you go to describe red or black or blue or tall or short, you are limiting it. That is not the nature of the Transcendent reality. Oh, Chakshu. Now that is not object. Adresham, Agrayam, Agotram, Avarnam tell us that that is not an object. Now, subject or the means of knowledge, Karana, eyes. Oh, Chakshu. Oh, it does not have the eyes. It, two meanings will come. It is not the eyes. It does not have the eyes. It does not require the eyes. So it is not a means of knowledge, nor it is the subject knowing the knowledge. So both these meanings are coming in Achakri, Ashrotram. These two are the main Indriyas. Eyes and ears. <clears throat> so when they are mentioned, all the five senses are mentioned that it has no touch, or it is not an object of touch. It is not the person using the touch. The Nanendriyas, a person having Nanendriyas have been described. About Karmendriyas, 
after the pani padam neither it has hands nor legs it is not hands or legs it is not a person having hands and legs both these meanings come here neither an instrument nor the subject so nay first not the object then neither the instrument nor the subject knowing the object so it is not a subject it is not an object how to know it then knowing is to give up the present means of knowledge as shankar told automatically that will change because that is our real nature nityam and you have to find eternal that was the common reality in the past that is the common reality in the present that is the common reality of the future so it is a permanent something unchangingly permanent vibhum vibhum brings it immanent he is all pervading vishesh rupena bhati iti vibhu it has all special manifestations you and i and pot and table and forest and oceans are its special manifestation sarvagatam and he has gone everywhere it is all pervading how we do not see it so sukshmam it is subtler than the subtlest certain things we can see by our yogic vision but subtler than the subtlest is that reality that means if we know by indriyas it is called gross when you do not know by indriyas it is sat when we do not know by mind when we do not know it as i know you when that is not there then it is subtler than the subtlest that avayam it does not get exhausted it has no change nityam is permanent but this is kutastha nitya unchangingly permanent avayam so that is that reality and that knowledge which will give us the knowledge of that reality is paravidya so you have to train our mind to get that yad bhuta yonim paripashanti dhira dhira means viveki people people who know things they have seen that it is the source of all the beings of the world bhuta yonim they are that is the source of all the living beings or non living beings everything of this world is from it so it is a direct statement of sagunatva brahman of the god being the creator preserver and destroyer of the world along with it being the transcendent over everything so we will take up the commentary of this on the next wednesday but today we saw shonaka's position and the guru is telling him step by step that there are two types of knowledge the lower knowledge is wrong knowledge it has to be given up and the real knowledge depends upon the nature of the reality and the nature of the reality is that it is neither an object of sense organs it is neither an object of karmendriyas it is neither the means of nanendriyas and karmendriyas it is neither the subject which has the nanendriyas and karmendriyas it is eternal it is all pervading it is gone everywhere it is subtler than the subtlest it is unchanging and that itself we see by the vivek people by the knowers as the source of this world so how to mold our mind towards that will be the topic taken up om madram karne vishnu yama deva madram pashe maksha veer yajatra sirai rangai sushta vamsas tano vi vyashe ma deva hitam yada sastina indro vruddha shrava sastina pusha visho veda sastina starkyo vishnu nemi sastina vrihaspati dadatu om shanti 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 hari om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanasi